uh, for today, me and Stephen will be explaining ethanol. So it's chapter three in the first module. Um, yeah, just to get right into it. The dehydration of ethanol. Dehydration of ethanol is a chemical process where a water molecule is removed from ethanol, forming ethylene. The you see these two are preserved, and they break up to form H2O. An acid catalyst. CIH and the CH bonds allow the formation of a double bond and water. It also reduces the activation energy. It is in concentrated form as it is a powerful dehydration agent. And the hydration of ethanol. The hydration of ethylene is a chemical process where a water molecule is added to ethylene, forming ethanol. In this case, the acid catalyst, which dilutes off the acid, opens the double bond, allowing water to attach, forming ethanol. Ethanol as a solvent. Ethanol is able to act as a solvent for both polar and non-polar substances and some ionic substances due to its uh, unique molecular structure. As you can see from the diagram here, um, the OH minus group um, is polar and this section as a result forms polar bonds, polar bonds with other polar substances such as water. The other side, the CH3CH2 plus um, group, it has CH and CC bonds and due to that, um, it is non-polar, and it can share dispersion forces with other non-polar substances and dissolvent. Um, because of this, um, many industries use ethanol. An example of two is um, the paint industry. Um, paint is used to stick the solid paint onto other solids, um, so it's used as a solvent, and then it, it evaporates due to its low boiling point, it being transparent as well, it doesn't change the color paint and volatile, so after it evaporates, the paint sticks onto the solid wall, which is very useful. Also, it is used in the medical industry to ensure medication is soluble, and it's also um, a natural sterilizer. And ethanol is an alternative fuel. Here we have the equation for the complete combustion of octane, and the complete combustion of ethanol. So you can see the ratio between fuel and oxygen here is less than that one, as that will be explained later. Now, ethanol is, an alt is a renewable resource which is derived from non-fossil fuel sources, but you might be thinking, yeah, I get that, but what does that actually mean? <laughs> that means the production rate is bringing the production rate and... <laughs> It also acts as a good source of income for local farmers, constant demand for production of ethanol from crops. And the disadvantages of ethanol include all the engines have to be modified to run on fuel containing ethanol mixed in fuel. And engines wear down faster due to need for higher engine compression ratios for ethanol combustion, and large areas of land are required to grow crops that will be harvested from ethanol production, which can be used for other purposes. So, the fermentation of glucose. This is a biochemical process um, in which glucose is turned into ethanol and carbon dioxide as a kind of a byproduct. Um, this is through the action of enzymes from yeast. Zymase is the actual enzyme. As you can see here, um, glucose is broken down into two ethanol and carbon dioxide. Um, the optimal conditions for which uh, fermentation is promoted is that the glucose must be dissolved in water. There must be a presence of the yeast cultures. Um, this acts as the catalyst, as we said before. Um, it has to be in an anaerobic environment, so exclusion of air. Um, the temperature should be at around 37 degrees, because that's the optimal temperature for enzymes to function at. And the low pH, and also the pH can be lowered to prevent growth of microbes. Uh, this is mainly in industrial processes, but it can also be done in a lab. Uh, when the so when fermentation is completed, when the concentration of ethanol reaches about 15%, because the yeast lies at that concentration, uh, in the industrial production, distillation is also used to obtain a higher ethanol concentration, so about 95 to 100%. More heat combustion. <coughs> it is the heat energy released when one, one mole of a substance undergoes complete combustion with oxygen at a pressure of one atmosphere. 
to speak with the body parts doing carbon dioxide and H2O. This is the formula for the quality of the last few changing heat. It is equal to negative M, which is kilograms. Mm -hmm. C is the specific heat that we are starting in the kilograms of Kelvin. And change in temperature in Kelvin. Uh, this is an example question from just the molecule of combustion. So it says, uh, 0.25 gram sample of ethanol is going to raise the temperature of 120 degrees of an OED liquid as shown in the graph. Uh, there is no loss of heat surroundings. Uh, using the information shown in the graph, calculate the specific heat capacity of the OED liquid. Um, the heat combustion of ethanol is 1367 kilojoules per mole. And this is a four mark question. So if you go to the next, next page. Um, so first of all, they calculate the number of moles of ethanol, so mass over mole mass. Mass they calculate the number of moles. And then, uh, because they gave us the heat of combustion of ethanol, we times the amount of moles of ethanol we have by the heat of combustion, which gives us about 7,685 joules of energy. Then they rearrange the molar heat of combustion formula to this and they substitute everything we have, so the amount of energy, the amount of, uh, <coughs> the, what was it, the oily substance, you said 120 grams, that's converted to 0.12 kilogram, and then the change in heat, go back to the thing, graph. Although uh, it says the heat commenced at 20 degrees and ended at 50, that's the difference that you get. It cooled down after that, where the measurements were taken, but no, there was no loss of, um, like none of the substances gain heat either. So as you can see, um, the heating commenced at 20 degrees and finished at 50 degrees. So that's the that's the difference of heat we're using. Do you know how in the formula they ask for the difference of heat? You don't take this measurement, which is um, after the heating was completed, because as the question says, there's no loss of heat to surroundings. You have to calculate the actual combustion and the change of heat within that combustion, not afterwards. That's when the actual heat is lost because there's no more heating happening, it's just lost in the So yeah, um, if you go back to the answer, um, yeah, they just rearranged the formula. As I said, 120 grams is converted to kilograms. Difference in heat was 30, as we said before. Um, your final answer is 2.13 times 10 to the power 3 joules per kilogram. Um, yeah, there's also some other questions that we found which we thought would be good practice for this um, chapter of the module. Uh, this is a long response question. It says, with reference to the underlying chemistry and relevant equations, assess the impact on society of two uses of ethanol. Um, so make sure you actually have relevant equations when you're stating, you can say stuff like, the dehydration of ethanol and stuff, so just two processes and its uses and also its impact on society. It's an assess question, so you have to have a um, judgmental value at the end. Um, the second one, 2004, question 26, petroleum, sugar cane are both raw materials used for the production of ethanol. So it's asking to construct two flow diagrams of the production of ethanol from both those materials. So, um, we start off with petroleum. There's the catalytic cracking that you need to do to break down the massive chains into um, ethene, eth ethylene, uh, ethene. Whereas um, from crops, other crops, yeah, from sugar cane, you actually have to break it down from crushing the solid residue. You do um, bacterial decomposition. decomposition and the liquid part you just use, and then that is converted from glucose and fermented into ethanol. So you have to have a flow chart. You know how I said petroleum is cracked down into ethylene, that is obviously then uh, through hydration is transformed into ethanol. And then the second part is comparing the environmental sustainability of, the, of producing ethanol from these sources. You should be able to do that. Um, Last question, what features of molecular structure of ethanol account for its extensive use as a solvent? I had a slide of that. Um, the OH- group is polar, and the CH3-CH2 plus group um, is non-polar. So you have to say how 
polar charge, uh, polar, the polar part of ethanol is able to dissolve uh, polar substances and the non-polar part is shared dispersion for the 